Hi guys, my name is Rodrigo and you're watching Travelzilla. Today, I'm gonna help you how to get your tourist visa to Canada. Stay tuned, let's go! So guys, okay, you made your decision to go to Canada. It's a beautiful country, all right? Amazing landscape, great cities, lakes, the Aurora Borealis, you know, Niagara Falls, you name it. And it's very close to the United States, so you can do both in one trip. Yes, you can do that. So why not? You've made the decision to go to Canada, but the first step you need to make is go online, and I'm gonna leave a link here in the description, and you need to find out whether or not your country is part of the Canadian Visa Waiver Program. What does that mean? That means that you're not gonna need a visa to go to Canada, but you may need a, um, a, a, tr a special travel authorization called ETA, all right? And um, so you need to find out if you're American, you don't need to have your passport to go to Canada. All you need to do is, you know, have your ID with you. Um, if you're a foreign uh, national but live lawfully in the United States and have a green card, you can also go to Canada uh, with your green card and it's always good to take your passport with you as well. All right, now you wanna to go to Canada and you wanna get a visa. The first thing you need to do is to find out if your home country has the agreement. And then the second thing is whether or not you can apply online or if you need to go to the Canadian embassy or consulate near your city. Uh, rules may change from country to country, but for a lot of countries now, you can apply online, okay? And uh, you can also apply on paper. What is the difference? Is that if you apply online, you can upload all documents straight to the Canadian government's website or uh, straight to uh, a, a, um, a, a company that has any sort of agreements with Canada and, and that will be responsible for processing the visas for them, okay? That exists, that happens in regards to certain countries as well. And then uh, once you do that, um, you're gonna need to either upload your documents to the visa center or to the Canadian government or send in your documents by mail. Well, after that, you need to decide which type of, of tourist visa would you like. Okay, is it gonna be a, a single entry tourist visa? Is it gonna be a multiple entry tourist visa? Okay, uh, the price is the same. It's gonna be a hundred Canadian dollars for each. So why not just get the multiple uh, entry visa, you know? Because if you get a, a single entry visa, for example, and need an extension, and that's also valid for the multiple entry visa, you're gonna need to pay extra for that, and that's gonna cost you also 100 Canadian dollars, okay? Once you do that, you need to put together all the documents that will prove the following to the Canadian government. You need to prove that you are self-sufficient, meaning that you're gonna pay for your trip, you're gonna have the financial means to support yourself uh, whilst in Canada. Are you gonna get, have the money? Do you earn enough money uh, to pay for your hotel, pay for your air ticket, you know? You need to prove ties to your home country, okay? You need to prove to the Canadian government that you're gonna go back to your country. You have ties to your country. Do you go to college in your country? Do you have family that live in your country? Um, do you work? Do you go to school? What's going on with your life? You need to come up with your financial records, your financial means, you need to, uh, you know, bank statements, uh, salary, contracts, you know, we have a company, so send in your uh, company documents, you know, uh, your um, uh, annual taxes, you know, all of that, you know what I mean, right? And then you also need to prove that you have no criminal records, that you're gonna obey the Canadian laws, you know, you're gonna obey, you're gonna abide to the laws of the land, meaning you're gonna, you know, respect the Canadian laws when you're there, they wanna know that. Um, also, um, you need to prove that you're healthy and in some cases the Canadian government may ask you for a, a medical examination. That doesn't always happen, it never happened to me for example, but it does happen to certain people. They also want to know that um, you're not going to look for a job while you're in Canada, that you're going to go back to your country after um, the amount of time you're telling them that you're gonna stay there for and um, also the Canadian visa uh, the Canadian tourist visa will allow you to stay in Canada for up to six months a year okay the uh, length of the visas will vary from country to country I got a 10-year visa for example and if you have relatives that live in Canada you need to uh, ask them to um, um, scan 
their uh, bio page on their passport and their passport information, uh, you know, their ID and stuff like that, put it all together and send it to you because you're gonna need to send that to um, the Canadian government as well. For example, I have a nephew and a niece that were born in Canada and are being raised there. And so I had to have their passports, even though like one is five and one is one year old, okay? So they're a copy of their passports, a copy of their father's passport and their, their, you know, their father is Canadian. And then my sister is Brazilian and she's a resident. She's been a lawful resident of Canada for over 12 years. So I need to get her documentation as well, put it all together, plus like a letter from them, you know, uh, telling the Canadian government, like an affidavit, you know, telling the Canadian government a statement that's saying, okay, the, he's my brother or cousin or whatever. He's gonna stay at my house and this is who I am and this is my information, blah, 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 and that's how you do it. So did I mention that you're gonna have to prove to them that you're not a criminal, so you, you, may, you may have no criminal records and you're not gonna pose a risk to the Canadian people or to the Canadian government in any way, shape or form, okay? When you put these documents together, do not lie ever. So when you put these documents together, don't ever lie, okay? And if you've been to the United States before, uh, you may not need a visa to enter Canada, for example, and that's something you need to research because there are so many countries in the world that I can't possibly tell you all the countries that are part of these types of agreements. But as a Brazilian, for example, if I have a, um, an American passport, uh, uh, sorry, if I have a visa to the United States, for example, and let's say I have a 10 year visa to the United States, but when I went to Canada, I didn't have that visa yet. So I had to apply for the Canadian visa and I had to apply for the, the United States visa later on. But anyway, let's say you have a visa to the United States. To certain countries such as Brazil, they'll say that, they say that if you have an American uh, uh, visa, you don't need to get a Canadian visa because the American government and the Canadian government share database, okay? And that's why if you go to the United States and do something wrong, the Canadian government may know about it, okay? So don't ever lie, okay? Listen to me, don't ever lie. If you get, uh, if you get denied entry to Canada, you can try later, you know? Don't do a lousy job, otherwise you may never be able to go there and visit this wonderful country, okay? So to a lot of people like myself, like Brazilians and, and people from other countries, and I'm gonna mention the countries right now. Mention the countries that are part of a program such as this. So you may not need a Canadian visa. All you need to do is apply for an ETA, okay? And uh, Brazilians and people from other nationalities that have a, an American visa can apply for an ETA. You don't need a visa for Canada, specifically for Canada, in order for you to enter and you can stay up to a certain amount of time. Once you put all of that documentation together, you go onto the uh, Canada website, take part in an eligibility test. You need to take an eligibility test, see if you're eligible to apply for the visa, you know, so just so that you don't waste your money. Um, and once you pass that test, you download the forms, fill out the forms, okay? Put together all the previous documents I asked you to uh, come up with. And uh, then you're gonna pay for the fee. You know, and each country has a different rule as to how this uh, visa fee must be paid. To, in some countries, the Canadian government asks for you to have a, a credit card, um, you know, in some countries you can make a deposit into a bank. It varies, so you need to do your research in regards to that, okay? Because there are hundreds, of, well over 200 countries in the world. Um, and then you go to a visa application center, okay? And you, um, once you go to the visa application center, they might take your finger, fingerprints, I mean, it really varies from country to country, and then you submit all your documents, you're gonna have to have a picture with you, and usually the picture, you know, the back of the picture needs to be all in white, you can't smile, you can't show a lot of emotion, um, and uh, the picture needs to be pretty clear, you know, um, and then the government is gonna notify you whether or not you got your visa uh, in about 20 business days that varies a lot from country to country as well, okay? In my case here in Brazil, I didn't need to go to a visa application center at all. I did everything online. I, uh, I, I scanned my passport, you know, all pages of my passport because they ask you to prove 
if you've traveled abroad before and everything. So I scanned not only my current passport, but the previous passports as well, put it all together in one file and uploaded it uh, onto the system and sent everything to the Canadian government, okay? So I sent everything, my financial records, my criminal records, which I don't have, uh, my previous passports, my uh, proof that I was financially able to pay for my trip, that I have relatives that live there, that I was gonna come back to Brazil, and I've been to Canada three times uh, since I got my visa, and you know, everything worked out fine. Welcome to Calgary. Welcome, <laughs> So I'm here walking through the mountainous areas of uh, Drumheller. My mom is like the queen of selfies. She's taking so many selfies. Oh my god. Look. Let's check her out. Hi. <laughs> Hi guys, so we're here now at Lake Louise and this is one of the most stunning places I've ever seen in my life. Who is that? There. Who is that there? Look. Who is that there? Look. I see you. Hey guys, so here we are in Toronto at night. We came here to the famous sign, which is actually more beautiful at night than during the day. In regards to the, uh, to the fees, just in case I didn't mention, and if I mentioned, I'm gonna say it again. Uh, the prices for a single entry visa is 100 Canadian dollars, multiple entry visas, 100 Canadian dollars, and for a visa extension, 100 Canadian dollars. So everything is gonna be 100 Canadian dollars. Remember I explained before that if your country is part of the visa waiver program, you may not need a visa to go to Canada. You may need an ETA, so do your research. Some of these countries are, I mean most European countries, Andorra, um, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Estonia, Germany, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, um, Namibia, which is in Africa and it's an amazing place. I definitely want to go there one day. Norway, Portugal, where my ancestors come from. St. Vincent, Slovakia, San Marino, Swaziland, also uh, in Africa. Sweden, Slovenia, the United States, the United Kingdom. Western Samoa, St. Lucia, Poland, New Zealand, Monaco, Liechtenstein, South Korea, Israel, Hungary, France, Denmark, Brunei, Barbados, and Australia, okay, are part of the visa waiver program, so. Hey guys, so before I say goodbye to you, what are the do's and don'ts of the Canadian visa application? Fill out all your documents carefully, okay? You know, so read and read it again, and make sure you have everything, okay? Apply for your tourist visa a few months before your, your trip because if you apply, let's say the day before, the week before, two weeks before, you may not have enough time, okay? So apply a few months before. I've applied six months before I actually went to Canada and my visa took, uh, I think, 20 business days, you know? And then once uh, my visa was approved, then I had to send in my passport, which is a whole different thing. You know, so I had to send my passport after I got my answer from the Canadian government. They said, okay, you're clear to get a visa, so send in your passport. And I sent my passport, and then a few days later, I picked it up, okay? Um, and bring along all forms and supporting documents so that your visa gets approved. So what are the don'ts? Don't present false documents for your visa obviously, all right? Don't hide or misrepresent facts in your visa application, never. You have no idea. These guys, they'll find out, you know? You need to keep in mind that they do this every day. They know all the tricks, okay? They know all the tricks. They've read all the books about tricks. 
don't try to trick them because you may do this once every 10 years or once every five years or maybe it's gonna be your first time they do this every day they um, have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people doing this worldwide these people aren't stupid okay just keep that in mind hey guys so that's it pretty much and I hope I helped you in some way shape or form okay don't be nervous be truthful you know uh, stay true to your heart and I honestly from the bottom of my heart uh, wish you the best of luck on getting your visa to Canada is a great country and some of the things that you should visit in Canada and some of the things I've visited in Canada that I love I absolutely love Calgary I love Banff Banff is amazing Lake Moraine Lake Louise some of the most beautiful lakes ever in the world you know just north of, Cal of Calgary you can go to Banff and it's amazing you know like Lake Moraine Lake Louise I'm saying it again because it's that beautiful just south of Calgary you can go to Waterton which is also you know lakes bison you can eat bison burger you can um, um, you know spend a couple of nights in beautiful hotels and it's very close to the border with the United States you can go down to Montana in the United States and do some shopping blah 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 and also and then you can go back into Canada go back in the, into Calgary you can visit some of the world's best preserved uh, dinosaur uh, fossils which it's very 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 close to uh, Calgary and you can also go up to Edmonton and they have there like one of the most amazing indoor water parks in the world which is absolutely amazing and a lot of major artists like incredible artists like I don't know Mariah Carey Madonna Lady Gaga Rihanna blah 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 Coldplay they perform in Edmonton because they have a really good arena there really big so check it out you know your favorite artists might be playing in Alberta and uh, just north of Alberta you can see the Aurora Borealis and then you can visit great cities such as Vancouver, Victoria, Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, Toronto, Halifax, so on and so forth. So many great places to see in Canada. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this vlog. Don't forget to drop a like. Okay, big huge like. Leave a comment, share, and subscribe. If you need to go to Canada, check out my affiliate links as well because you may, you know, buy your tickets and get your hotels from my affiliate links and I'm gonna get a small commission but that helps the channel as well. Thank you so much for staying with me and see you on the next video. Hope that you watch all my videos and that I um, was able to help you in any way, shape, or form. Okay, bye. Okay, okay guys, goodbye. See you.